was waiting until Georgia got a composition running, right? Their composition came online. They had great team fights. They were executing flawlessly. Then they made a single mistake. What we watched was a single mistake bring down an entire team because after one mistake, Columbia had the experience and the macro play to close out the entire game. And now we are getting into the champion select for game two. Columbia, they're ready to go 3-0 without a single loss in group B. They can take this one home. Look at that. Aurelia, Galio, Swain being banned. I would expect Kaisa to be somewhere on that list, but it's going to be Zaya instead. Interestingly enough, the other strategy, of course, is that you can leave up the 80 carries, um, force the other team, dare the other team to ban one of them, and then if they do, you throw it in as your last ban. But if they don't, you know, you just get an 80 carry, right? You get either... Um, Zaya, or sorry, uh, Kaisa Morg or Caitlyn Morg, and those are both very good lanes. So, with North Georgia banning out the Morgana, they are in fact going to leave up at least one of the 80 carries. And I think that realistically, based on Quick Crit's playstyle, he's going to want to go for that Caitlyn. But we shall see. Of course, Kaisa is a fantastic 80 carry if they do pick her She's up. She's so strong. She's, She's so, so strong. strong. There's no, it's... there's no real arguing with it. It's like, sure, maybe she's not your playstyle, but you kind of have to <laughs> learn her in this meta. If you don't, you're giving over one of the single strongest champions in the game over towards Columbia College, and I don't think that's a good idea. We saw what happened last game. That was with an AP Aurelia. Yeah, and the AP Aurelia, uh, surprisingly strong, some people might say, but she has some insane scalings. That champion. Um, is up to point eights on certain abilities, and that's a very realistic AP champion at that point in the game. Of course, um, Columbia College isn't done yet. They're uh, they're, yeah, they're going having for fun. A they're having a lot of fun. Chase. So, if we thought that they were early game before, they are doubling down on that. Renekton and Jace want to win early, but because they drafted them so early, Northern Georgia, they have opportunities to kind of flex around what they want to do. They get Kled, a really good champion, into Renekton, and even into Jace. Yeah, because the good thing about Kled is every time there's a burst champ in the game, uh, you have a second chance. You reset, you know, you stop, turn intangible, pop off, and then pop off, right? <laughs> pop off, pop on. It's all the good stuff. Gragas going to be locked in now. So imagine that's going to be for Zach, but... With how Columbia have been playing so far, I wouldn't be surprised if this is what it's going to be. Julian's going to take Grog Smith. Misty Stumpy, Renekton top. Jace is going to go on to Evan RL. And they're waiting for the jungler and for support until the next round. These are my predictions coming in. I'm predicting we get the Gragas support. Oh. Jace mid, Renekton oh. jungle. Oh. oh, you're going really spicy on this. I love yeah, it. So the I love it. Jungle. Of course, is uh, a little bit of that solo queue special. It's not good. It's not great. It's not even close to good, in fact. Um, but at least they'd have a really interesting jungle. In fact, they are going to go with the Zac. So this guarantees that the Jace or the Gragas has to be bot lane. No, I no no. no. It. I think it's Gragas mid. Jace jungle. I'm ta taking it back now. Okay. okay. <laughs> and top. And then they're waiting. And that's going to be a support Zach. I used to support actually Zach. play okay. support Zach a lot back in the day when he first got reworked. In fact, I had a 100% win rate on that. It was ridiculous. It, like early game, you're, you're going to get poked out. And then later on, you just you had so much that you could provide. It was ridiculous. But over on the other side, Northern Georgia, I, we saw a crazy kind of jungler before Wukong came out. This time around, we get the Stampede. Hecrum going to make his way onto the rift. It's the final It is Chase Gragas bot. Chase Gragas bot? You think, wait, what if it's a Nivea bot? It's Chase no, no, Gragas. No, 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 see. It's, what? it's, you know, no, see that, yeah, this is it. This is it. I think this is it. I, I think there's... Gragas is mid. I'm calling Gragas mid. There's no oh. smite. Oh, wait, Dean. <laughs> okay, there's no smite. There's no smite. Nobody's jungling. Huh. We have 30 seconds until they change their summoners. So we can still theory craft on this. They're moving around a bunch of things. So it's like, we don't know yet. Don't There's, know. If they put Zach's support, right? I am the most confused I've ever been in the world, right? This is, I, I, I just have no words Wait, at this now point. Now Evan has smite. Evan is going jungle Renekton. 
I'm I... waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting until we have five seconds. Four, three, two, one. This one is second. it. This is the cop. Yep. There you go. So Zach is going to go 80 carry <laughs> on Jace. Julian's mid Grogus. Nivia top for Misty Stumpy. I, I, okay, so for reference, the only time I've ever seen Jungle Renekton is Uncle Jamal, right? He's, he's a fantastic Renekton, don't get me wrong. He's not a very good Renekton jungle, and he's like the best Renekton in the game. So if this is Evan's debut, his realization that he is Uncle Jamal, that he is the one playing that account, then they are going to win the game. That's what I'm calling here. We are, we are learning this is a signal from him that he actually owns that account. He is that man. He is multiple people once. Wait, wait, wait. What if... No, no, no. So, hear me out. What <laughs> if this is the strat? So, they go for another early invade. They try to see if they can get on to regrets early. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. Evan RL never actually jungles. All he does is look for kills onto regret. He never tries to clear his own camps until regrets regret is, is there. Kill. And yes. So he kills Regret right when they're about to die, then he takes it because it's a free leash every single time. He, he can even smite steal it. He could smite steal it and then kill off the hacker. Exactly, hacker-y. exactly. That's fantastic. There's so many, That's a great there's so many, But you have, this now is going to require Columbia to prove that they can have excellent knowledge and macro early into the game. Utilize Dean on Zach to get a lot of vision around the side of the jungle, so it's always... Just Evan going, okay, where is he at now? Where am I going to kill my target now? <laughs> that's that's how you play. Walk it's like Sack of Gold. Bring him to me so I may sample his wares. Exactly. It's like, have you ever played Teemo Jungle? <laughs> yes. It's that's exactly he, like that. It's exactly, exactly like that, exactly except like that. you don't have invisibility. You just have to have really good macro knowledge. So this is what Evan's going to do. This is my prediction. I mean, the interesting thing is we haven't even talked about the side of North Georgia, right? They've ah, got who cares? Karma Mid, you know? <laughs> They've got Kaisa plus Lulu, right? This is a very good hyper carry setup from them. Ah. And then they have Kled and Hecarim. So they have a hyper carry setup with speed ups, with double speed ups, with triple speed ups, with a Kled ultimate. That's going to be a fast on top of the Kaisa, man. Right? So they, they, they have Sonic plus Kaisa at the same time. This is going to be a fantastically fast composition. Gotta go fast. But it does it matter if you get smashed by Zach J- Jace bottom or, or the worst thing about all of this they have all this movement speed and what stops someone from moving a wall death <laughs> death <laughs> but a wall they're gonna they have anivia build the wall boom now you can't get past it we must build a wall and make north georgia pay for it but besides <laughs> since <laughs> Columbia College has had themselves a fantastic run so far. They're looking to stay undefeated with this win. It's Chase and Zach bottom lane. We'll see if it pans out. (laughs) I hope you know that's how I feel. (laughs) (laughs) Understandable. Have a nice day. (laughs) Understandable. Have a nice day, sir. All right. So, Zeta, enough of the jokes we'll wait okay. for that for the game to actually start because we're in champion select now well not champion select in the loading screen my mind is gone i don't know what happened I, I i feel like i'm having a fever dream at this point in time but anyways this evan's is game jungling <laughs> this evan is, is jungling mr stumpy was mid last game he's playing no, okay. Rally. i don't know what's going on anymore it's okay it's okay but this is game two <laughs> columbia college northern <gasps> georgia university <laughs> Both of them with very interesting team compositions. One of them makes more sense than the other. Um, I'm just, I, I, I want to take it seriously. I'm trying, I'm trying, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm really I'm, trying. I'm sorry. We're going to reset. We're going to. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, when we look at the fact that Kaisa exists and has two supports, uh, she's going to do insane amounts of damage, right? She's yes. going to be incredibly hard to kill. She's yes. got great speed ups. She's got, you know, her ultimate to stay alive. And as an engaged team, I think North Georgia actually have quite a bit of potential against a composition uh, like Columbia College's, right? When you have, you know, no significant range advantage, you know, besides the Anivia as your only one. And she, being quite static, you know, has to leave behind her ultimate field and her zone tools as a result if you run at her. So 
realistically, I think North Georgia actually have drafted a pretty good composition considering how unconventional their opponents have been. Yeah, they have a, an amazing composition. I love it. It's a great composition, but you have to keep in mind, there's so much early game that can still come out of Columbia College. Jace Renekin, so powerful in the early stages of the game that if they're not careful, they can give over this early game. Make it so Columbia can try to see if they want to end game two in a much quicker fashion than they did in game one. We're about to load up onto the rift. Game two, this could be it for Northern Georgia University. There are hopes at keeping at least one more game alive. Ride on the outcome of this one. All dependent on if Evan RL is going to be able to perform on Renekton Jungle. And if Zach is going to be able to perform on the Jace AD carry, right? Jace AD carry is is such an interesting pick because not only do you have very limited ranges, but for the most part, in order to actually kill people, you have to go melee. Right? You have to actually leap in. You have to go in with those abilities. And flash they're going to flash forward. forward. They get the flash out of Hirai. But wow. That was definitely Columbia wanting to see if they can turn it around early. They want to pick up these skills. Budget box. Don't want to get too far out. No flash from Julian with the body slam. So not going to be able to get anything out of budget box. Yeah, and <laughs> you're you're at such a loss of word Zeta. It's okay. It's okay. It, it's at this point in the game, I think Columbia been... College have done a really good job of confusing us, and they did force um, a summoner out of the Lulu. So you know, if Misty's if Mr. Stumpy, who's going to be top lane actually, yep. um, with the Anivia, doesn't need flash, which is unlikely against the Kled he's going to be okay, right? That's still a good trade because it means that the Jace and the Zac, two very, you know, kill needing laners, right? These two are aggressive. They need to get the damage. They need to get the combos. They need to get the kills if they want to make the lane work. To not have flash on one of the people that they're facing is a fantastic advantage as Lulu walks into the dash bush. She walks into the dash bush, but Zac and Dane were already retreating. They wanted to get control of the waves as quickly as possible. At least try to get level two. That's when I imagine an all-in from Zach and Dean's going to come. Yeah, and that's when the all-in can come as well from, you know, Dean. Because once he gets the two, then realistically, he's going to have not just the slingshot, but he'll also have the strike, you know, the stretching strike to get leash, to knock them together, clap their heads. And then hopefully he can act as a pseudo jungler ganking his own lane from the bushes. See, I'm disappointed in Evan RL right now. He could have easily gone for something a little bit more aggressive, but now the level two we were talking about from Dean did come. The last slingshot stretching strikes, but didn't connect onto anybody else to throw back Lulu. And that's going to be, I think, a very testing point of this lane. You know, can they manage the wave to force Harai and Quick to get out? To, you know, force them to stand far enough up that the Zac can take advantage, but the Hecarim's ghosting in top. Misty Stumpy gets knocked back, Agnivia. Sad to say, you're not that tanky when you're Agnivia. And it's a free first blood going over towards the side of North Carolina. As here's Evan, he's looking, flash forward, gets the strike, Ooh. and gets the kill. Double strike, double hit, gets a second kill, but we were talking about that. You know, we mentioned if he doesn't die, it's going to be a fantastic trade of summoner spells. He did die, right? The Anivia top lane is so vulnerable to ganks because it's no TP, because currently he has to trade out for it. You know, he's got himself a uh, Unsealed Spell book. He can trade out for the TP, but he has to trade out for it. So he's not only going to have an extremely long walk back to lane, he's going to lose more XP and more gold on that. He also has no flash. He will be getting ganked again, guaranteed, well, as the okay. Hecarim, to prove my point, goes back up top lane to set up for another one. Yeah, it's only level two for Misty Stumpy as well. Very vulnerable. Easy target, and they can blow him up pretty quick. Dean. Then early roam into the mid lane. Feeling that Zach's pretty confident in the bottom side of the map. Evan almost taken down by the blue buff as well. Scary stuff for the Renekton jungle. Ooh, Zach. I mean, he's already getting poked. He's already getting chunked. Lulu plus Kaisa is a lane that nobody should have to face. It's almost against the Geneva Convention, because what happens is not only do you get Polymorph, but then you get completely bursted, two-thirds of your HP at level two on most occasions. And to say that there's almost no counterplay, I think, is to give it too little credit, because once you're Polymorphed, you can't do anything. This spell 
is the ultimate form of CC because it's not only point and click and instant, it's a slow combined with a full disable of spells. Not and wrong. Oh, as, sorry. as of this point, right, Dean's going to have to make some magic happen if they want this lane to pan out. <laughs> exactly. And this is where I was even going to ask, looking over to Zach and Dean, there's pretty much half a, a range versus two range because Jace, with his multiple forms, can switch over to melee, but that means he's only part of the time ranged. It gives it makes this lane so difficult, and they can easily be punished. I mean, they had a level advantage. They tried going for the all-in and weren't able to capitalize on it. So, should we start seeing maybe more aggression coming in from Quick, Crit, and yeah. Drive? Well, it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. If the Ignite comes down, heal not enough. Barrier pop by Quick Crit. He thought he had heal as well. He wanted to save Harai, but was a little bit too late. The second kill is picked up by Columbia College. And interestingly enough, I actually think that Dean and Zach could have killed Quick Crit right there, but it's it's hard to know, right? When you don't play Jace AD carry very often, you don't know you know how much damage you're currently doing at a lot of points in the game. So low mana. Yeah, it, it makes it a little bit more difficult. So, as of right now, at least, uh, Zach and Zach uh, are going to be quite down in levels for the next couple of bits. They're going to get zoned. You talked about the range advantage. That's absolutely a massive factor in bot lane. And not only that, the push factor is huge too, right? Jace cannot push safely. Kaisa can push very safely. So can Lulu. And Zach can't help push much at all. So now it's going to be on to whether or not we see Evan RL actually making uh, any form of gank so far. He is level 5. He hasn't died to any jungle creeps. That is a huge plus for Renekton Jungle, but this is an all-in coming in. Finally, the gank from Evan RL, but not in time with the explosive cast that knocked him away from the stun of Evan RL. Karma running Julian for the hill, low. but look at where Dean's pathing. He wants to see if they can cut him off, even though it's no mana for Julian. He, he has to be a little bit careful. Clydent coming in will discourage the Predator pop as well. Movement speed for days. Evan RL does not have the just yet. Is he taken down by a budget box? This is definitely going to be the next target locked down for quite some time. Does get a stun in the end of the day. Flashes away from the bear trap on a rope. Mantra Q, barely out of range. And Columbia, I mean, they haven't found much purchase in most of their damage. Oh my goodness. Oh. Is he going to land the shot? One more auto with the flashes from both AD carries. Gives the kill to Jason. Two kills on Jace. He's going for lethality. He's going to start hurting even more. That was... Where you can't be, right? You can't be solo against this man because when you're solo, then it turns back into a Jace lane. You know, he is the one that controls the one versus one. As soon as your support leaves, he is the master of your domain. You need to respect him. You need to not walk forwards and give him free purchase on your supple body because then he will take full advantage of it. Exactly. <laughs> and it's something that will have to be phrasing, feared by... But yeah, freezing. That's why I, I was trying to dance around that. But unfortunately for Quick Crit, now he's gone for the call. Going for the call against Jace, I don't think was an optimal choice. Because you were just mentioning it. The 1v1, you need to have a little bit more safety into this matchup. Oh, Regrets is going to try and make them pay a little bit. Talk about safety, Dean. Doesn't have yeah, much of anything think, right now. No ultimate flash to the wall. He's out for dead at this point. He does have Bloblets, but... Unfortunately, TP's not up. unless they wanted a TP, there was no real way of survival for Dean. Yeah, and with no TP, there's no way they can save him. The Zac does go down, but fortunately, right, it's only one kill. He did burn Flash, he's trying to get out of it, but, I mean, Flash, a little bit of time for your Jace to farm. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it is a good start. You know, North Georgia, they are finally capitalizing on these aggressive plays, and they're going to need to, because if they can slow down this game like they did the last one, it's going to turn out even better. Yeah, they have a far, far better team composition than we see from Columbia. A lot of uh, mixed signals we're getting from this. Nivia wants to scale up, but Jace, Renekton, want to do damage early. They want to be very aggressive as quickly as possible, so it's not really looking good for Columbia if they wait a little bit too long, unless they can keep getting these kills Ooh. on the Harai. Even with the shield, it's nowhere close to enough. Let's bounce, drag, oh. quick crit, and that's going to be the killing spree <laughs> coming for Zach. What the heck just happened? I mean, one second they're there, the next second they're not. The, the health bars just don't exist in the bot lane right now. Julian, <laughs> even though Julian. he's fine, he's going to get killed. 
<laughs> budget box. Okay. Okay, did you have, you have to appreciate what he was trying to do? He's there. trying to knock him straight into the barrel and then get the E combo. I've seen it a thousand times in montages, but unfortunately, this ain't Woody Fruity. He is not getting that purchase today. And yeah, budget I have box. I appreciate it though. I was just watching. Oh yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely appreciate the effort, but H it's for effort, F for execution. <laughs> That's what you have to give him. But now it is still a small, just small gold lead for Columbia. 10 minutes into the game, Bax has been coming in. Yomu's Ghost Blade, just picked up by Jace. Talked about lethality in the lane in these 1v1 scenarios, how much damage he's going to be able to do to the quick shot, a uh, quick crit. And without. And he's up. He's up 2k, right? Exactly. At this point in the game, he's up nearly a whole item. And when you mentioned the call, I didn't actually get to talk about that a second. It is a fantastic buy if you can stall out, obviously, but he just hasn't been able to stall out, right? You've seen that he cannot stall out this bottom lane, and so in that Evan context, I really R do question him. is it fighting out. with regrets a oh. lot. The snipe from Zach. That was dirty. That was a 1v1, Zach. Let it happen. <laughs> Didn't call it in chat. It's fair. Fair oh, to interfere okay. if you don't call, call it in chat. This is true. This is true. You have to call it in chat. Ah. Unfortunate. Unfortunate scenario for regrets. <laughs> Probably happened What else is unfortunate regrets. is actually that the Hecarim was out dueling the Renekton there. Um, and then finally did get picked off, right? Because of his sustain, because of um, the fact that he's actually, uh, you know, got the same red smite. He was actually able to do the same amount of damage, right? And if they're doing the same amount of damage, both have red smite, they're both going to be equally oh, as aggressive. Gonna be dragged back, beautiful stopwatch so that the left hand doesn't connect, but slammed back by Zach. Revenge! Regrets! He has it in his eyes, he shuts Ooh. down Zach, says this is what you get for not letting me have my 1v1 earlier. But now Evan RL wants to save Dean, has a bit of damage. Dominance not yet off a of cooldown, but it doesn't matter because he takes down Regrets. Will be able to escape with his life as well, just barely. Had to burn Flash to escape, but he did! get the Hecarim. The Rampage is over for now, and Evan RL can start to try and farm up again. But keep in mind, this Hecarim, we've been undervaluing it a little bit. You saw how much damage he did when he got onto Zack, and Zack, being so low range, is going to be in danger of that man nearly every time they fight. So, the pickup of the Hecarim, you know, being able to run at a very short range team, means that the distance you have to run is a lot shorter. Here the charge, going on a Misty Sempi in the top lane while Julian trying to keep this tower alive on the bottom side of the map. Nivy is going to hold on to life again, but here comes Dean for yet another gank on the budget box, and they are punishing Karma for pushing. The interesting thing about Zach's support also is that because you're Zach still, right? If you're halfway down the lane, you can gank. But because he's not the jungler, he doesn't have to leave. He can cap the lane 24-7 for his laner. Exactly. That's why I used to love to play it. It was great. You'd get Moby Boots and you'd just be like, all right, I'm all over the map and I can gank from anywhere. Zach wants to take a kill. Here comes Wild Growth into the Stampede from Regret tanking the tower. Zach, a little bit too ambitious. Doesn't have Dean just yet. Shield trying to see if he can do a little bit with the Glitter Lance to back it up. Wall in the top lane. Gonna be able to zone out a little bit on it to Kled. No more Scarl today as he's taken down by Misty Stumpy. And Misty Stumpy, surprisingly, hasn't died since that first gank, right? They haven't repeat ganked him. They didn't actually punish the Anivia too much post that first really quick engage. And oh, the Julian over the wall. Regrets a little bit undervaluing the damage that Julian can provide, but with quick crit hit. It will be a trade back and forth. Dean knows he cannot fight Kaisa. We'll get out of there. No void spotting today. Quick shot already used that to get into the battle. Oh, this has been, I mean, both of these games has been constant fighting, right? Every single time somebody shows up on the map, somebody minute. else is walking at them to get a kill. But Dean, he's going to make it a triple. The repeat, the hat trick in mid lane. And he even has less bounce this time. No stopwatch for Budget Box. Dean only being guard duty, making sure there's no escape for Budget. I mean, he's going to have to budget in some more money for some Zanyus or something, because at this rate, Otherwise, he's going to be spending all of his money on caskets. Those gray screens are going to pile up and up until all the color drains out of his monitor. Right now, what he needs is he needs somebody to help him out. Regrets hasn't been mid in forever. The bottom lane hasn't taken turret, and they still need somebody to come up and help this man. 
Well, see, the thing that's so hard is you look at bot side. Julian on Grog is actually has a far better wave clear than people give him credit for. This is why we saw him for so long, but let's put that on hold. Let's bounce flashed away by Hirai as yet another attempt by Dean and Zach to get a kill. And this is what we were talking about, right? He can camp the lane for forever. So every time you think, man, Zach's been in my lane for a long time. He can be wherever he wants now. There's no pressure on the Zach to do much of anything because he's no longer the jungler, right? He is just able to stand there, take damage, and just go for people. And it doesn't matter if he leaves or not because there's still another jungler left in the game. Budget Fox went bot lane this time around. He wanted to see if he can go into a different lane and be a little bit safer, but Evan RL trying to see if he can get a little bit of punish onto this Karma. Root gonna land onto Evan RL. No, just a little bit out of range, but here comes Regret. Jumping onto Zach, knocked back, Stampede forward. Void spotting about to be there for a quick crit. Gets the shield, takes down Zach as well. Dean running away from the battle. Can't fight without Jace. Yeah, and... That's the key for the Hecker and Punish, right? The only way that Georgia can punish this man, can punish Zach, is not by sending their, you know, soul laners mid, it's not by sending their AD carry, it's by sending the Hecker. The one thing that the Zach cannot do is peel the, the Jace all that effectively. You know, he needs help, he needs Julian, he needs somebody with more CC going not in, but out. Julian, that was a little bit BM. He knew that he could slow down Hecarim, this cast do make it so that Hecarim won't be able to jump on them as easily, but either way, it's a Cloud Drake going into the hands of Northern Georgia. Hecarim loves having more movement speed. Now, Moret fighting with Misty Seppi, knocked off of Skarl. Kled, without Skarl, is dead. And it's a little bit too much damage, right? As soon as he thinks he can go in on Mr. Stumpy, this Anivia has a surprising amount of health compared to the Klet. You know, she kites really well, puts up walls, does all manners of slows, and essentially just takes the Kled and makes his engage need the land, right? If you don't land the engage, there's no way you can just wait and try and zone. You just have to fully back out. And I don't think that he's been respecting that as as much on the Cynivia that he was on, you know, such as the Aurelia or the Camille. Completely agree with you, and then Meaning two towers are now in the pockets of Columbia. <laughs> Probably another kill. Killing spree for Evan RL. He's been finding kills left and right. He only died that one time. He's 4, 1, and 2 on Renekton Jungle. He flashed the wall. Flashed the wall. Gets the flash out of crit. But crit, even with the tower, you're not safe. Conqueror <laughs> on this Renekton as well. True damage for days, but this might be the revenge kill on Evan RL. They get the shutdown. Dean does jump over the wall, a little bit out of range from the bear trap on a rope. But all the while, mid lane, Zach takes down the last tier 1 tower that was standing for Northern Georgia. And the only tier 1 turrets that have been taken have been taken by Columbia College, right? Northern Georgia, they've been forced to respond to all of this aggression. So finally, Columbia College say, okay, we're going to aggress, we're going to keep pressuring you, but at the same time... We're going to use our macro, set up waves, and then take turrets with them as well. So it's a very, very hard task for Northern Georgia to be able to deal with this split push, to deal with the fact that they've got so many aggressive members. And it means that they've lost all their outers, but the inners, they're much closer together. They should be easier to hold. We'll see if they are, but the Rift Herald looks like it interests regrets a little bit more. Something that interests me a little bit is uh, how much damage is going to be coming out of Columbia if they're able to get it out. The same thing can be said for Northern Georgia. A lot of bruisers. Kled going for the bruiser build. Hecram going for the full damage with the Triforce. And on the side of Columbia, only going to be relying on Dean, on Zach, to provide some sort of front line. For a full damage Renekton, uh, he's quite tanky, to say the least. But, you know, high bases are good, at least. And Julian on the AP Gragas. Oh, he'll look yes. solo. Look at how much damage that does. That was absurd. By the way, he missed the combo. He was trying to set it up again with the explosive cask into his regular cask and missed. So he's just like, eh, I guess I'll just get the kill this way. What? Julian had a fantastic body slam. Spot. That was beautiful. But at the same time, unfortunately, with how Hecarim works, you can still get the damage out. And even topside. Now, Evan RL going to try to see if he can keep Agnivia alive. Bear trap on a rope. Not going to be in time. He revives himself. Skarl runs away, no snipe today for Zach. But at the same time, I do not think that Clyde can escape. He was about to get that last auto for the remount, doesn't live long enough, and that means that Columbia College have now opened themselves up 
the Rift Herald, their first neutral objective of the game at 19 minutes. They are now looking to take that Rift Herald, most likely crack open a tier two tower. This is the hardest thing for them to push, right? Ouch. The tier two towers. Oh! Oof. Zach, that's not legal. You're not allowed to do that. Bad. Bad. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I, there's fighting. I'm gonna wait. I'm waiting. Bad Zach. Now, here comes the full re-engage with the teleport completed. Evan RL on the other side, no dominance, but still he has a lot of damage. Ooh. Zach taking pretty low, he knocked back, regrets. Will finally finish off the kill. Julian flashes in, body slam, proto bell. The return of the favor on the regrets as Budget Fox might be able to take down Evan RL, but more than likely, he will sacrifice his own life. He flashes away from the Glacial Storm. Here comes the Dragon charge in from Kled. Gragas snipes and kills off Karma. Misty Stumpy jumped on by Kled. Here comes Quick Crit. There's gonna be a 2v2 battle of shields and heals for days, oh, but no. it's not helping you in any way with the AP. Grog is doing things that are absurd and unseen. With Harai finally showing up, he died at the beginning of this fight and was able to respawn. That's how long this fight has been going on. Remount for Skarl with Kled. Finishes off, shuts down Julian. And even though it's been back and forth, <laughs> it was like Columbia are the ones who had the better end of all that trading. They killed off all well, four of the five members. They're looking to kill off more now with the jump in by Zach. Well, let's see if Namor is going to be able to get onto Kled. He heals Polly. back up. Polymorph not there just yet. A little bit off of cooldown, and they get Kled. Lulu, even with the Flascone, I don't think oh. he escaped. But look who's here. Regret on the other side. <laughs> Finishes Zach. Might even, might even be able to finish the tower if Dean has anything to say about it. That was, that was a lot to process, so let's break it down a step at a time, right? Columbia College, they're going- We don't have a year to talk about this. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're going aggressive, they're trying to make these plays, and so far, they've been matched at pretty much every turn, right? They're still getting a little bit of a gold advantage all of these fights, but it's very, very even. Evan RL is looking for another pick on a quick. This is all about fights. I thought we'd have a change of pace in game two. I thought game two, it was starting so much slower. Teams weren't fighting as much. It was looking <laughs> like Macro was taking over. Now I am saddened by this. It's gone to the other way as we're 22 minutes into the game. And we have had, just on the side of Columbia alone, they've gotten a kill a minute. That's, I mean, that's an absolute nutty number of kills. Right now, what they need to do is they need to convert that into something more. Have an RL an in RL trouble. Nimaret's well. looking that's for it. That's a very early Guardian's Angel picked up by Nimaret as well. Garl kicked away, dodging out of the battle. But I'm just baffled. That is a very early Guardian's Angel. Well, hey, if one remount is good, what about two? You're not wrong. You're oh, not the wrong. wall. Harai taking a good chunk of damage. The wall disengaged regrets for the time being. Stun with the tower already locked onto him. Mantra Q gets the flash out of Misty Stumpy. He's barely alive. Regrets is under the tower. That movement speed, though, will get him way far away from the tower. And it's all thanks to Lulu, right? We mentioned Lulu. We mentioned Karma. We mentioned the speed they're going to give this team. When you add that into Kled and Renekton's already abnormally high movement speed, they become absolute bullets. And... So far, the slows, the CC, the knockbacks, they have not been enough to keep regrets off of these backline members. It'd be wonderful to see Columbia College try to regroup, try to get a little bit more peel, but realistically, I think they're going to just keep fighting. Quick crit flashed on by Evan RL. That damage over time that comes in from the alt, the shield a little bit helping out. True damage with regrets. Keep quick crit alive, but it will not help Budget Box who jumped on in the jungle. Julian finding Harai, having so much damage with these casks, even Ooh. the jump in from Dean to cement and solidify that kill. Regrets! Beautiful dodge away. All it takes is one more auto though. Look how fast the Stumpy's going in. Got the wall. Glacial Storm finalizes Hecra. Oh my gosh. I mean... This has been non-stop action, coast to coast. Columbia College never going to let off the gas, right? As soon as they see one of their members go down, they pick onto the Karma. And even though they did manage to kill off Evan RL, right? He's been a huge threat. He's been going on quick crit every single time. They weren't able to keep themselves alive afterward. They lose another few members, and at least they did trade back, right? They have Kled split pushing. They get their top turret, the first turret they brought down in the entire game but they're going to need more out of that split push if they want to start breaking even. 
Now, I I didn't see, but did they use the Rift Herald? I don't think, think so. so. Yeah, because it's gone. They forgot to use it. I think it got channeled and canceled. Realistic. Oh, maybe that's what it was. Because like I know I definitely didn't see it on the map. There's no because it's been more than. Well, four did they minutes, take so. the Rift Herald? Is the question. I thought they did. They might not have even taken it. Maybe they didn't. I thought they did. There's so much going on. But our minds are going all over the place. As now, Nimura Another... gets jumped on by Dean with Zach here as well. He's got Edge of Night just to dodge away from a little bit of the damage. But here comes a Stampede 4 from Regress. Wants to jump on. They're going to lose. Clyde in the top side has Guardian's Angel up. And he probably will die. Somehow down. in the mid lane. He got her arrived, finishing him off. They might even be able to get more. No. It will be Misty Seppi finally falling down. Budget Bach going on to Julian. He has no more mana. Not going to be able to trade back too much. Chugs a little bit. He's got to be careful. Doesn't want to get re-engaged by Regrets and Budget. That's a Ooh. lot of movement speed. A lot of damage onto Julian. Dean this year though. He's trying to turn this around with a big oh, ultimate. Double. Let's bounce. Ooh. Dragon of the Zach who already finished off. Quick crit. This is absurd. Try to see if he can get the knockback. Knock away from the inner flame. That is Karma and Gress on the other side. Sniped out by Zach. They still want to see if they can chase this down for Evan RL and Dean. They want to get on to Karma. Gress will escape as well. But it doesn't matter because Columbia, they're already getting the minions prepped, primed up, and ready to try to see if they can push down more advantages in to Northern Georgia. Yeah, and the advantages they'd be looking for, they'd be looking for this top turret, they'd be looking for the bottom inhibitor turret, and so far, they haven't been met, they haven't been able to find those advantages, right? With the teleport in, Mr. Stumpy's gonna try and start something up, but he has to contend with three 1v3. members here. 1v3, but here comes Dean, he jumps into the back line, wants to get the stretching strike, Ooh. does miss it just a little bit. Glacial Storm's doing a lot of damage, her ride finishes off as well. Dean, by himself, here comes Quick Crit as well. Flashes over the wall. Bloblets are there, I believe. Dean somehow putting on the moves. He gets out of there safe for now. Wants to eat a little bit of these plants. Julian is in the neighborhood. He could start helping out Zach if he wants to. Evan RL on the split push game now as the jungler. Yeah, when he's coming back in through their own base to try and pinch off Budget Box, you know that things have gotten wonky, but he's going to try and escape Nimoret. Has a chase right. mode, now he's the got the speed, speed up shield. Here comes the blast cone. Beautiful out of Evan RL. Oh, Julian, not so beautiful. Misses the flash there and yeah. doesn't get the instant knock up on the quick crit. See, I think he also forgot that you, there's a little bit of a channel time now with the explosive cast. So you don't have quite as instantaneous of that burst that you used to be able to get with mid Gragas, which is kind of why we saw it fall off. Was unfortunate, but at the same time, we do have to turn our attention a little bit. Jace to these is items. getting a kill here. Oh, oh yeah, he is. And bye. <laughs> all right, all right. Can, teams, let us talk. We want to talk. Grim's about getting caught out now. <laughs> Evan RL, four members together. But look at Nimaret. He is on the other side. Dominus not just yet. He's not Ooh. doing enough to help out. That was a lot of damage from Nimaret. He's finished off movement speed on to regrets. He's not sure who he wants to go on. Might have timed out a little bit of that movement speed. Dean jumps over the walls for now. Doesn't feel that Northern Georgia are confident enough to go on it to the Baron either. And as much as Nimaret wants to chase, I'm not sure he wants to chase if the ult's coming out. Oh, not at all. Scarl bounced away and shut down for Julian. Okay, this is the time. We can talk about items. Look at Julian. He's got Israelia's Reverie. He's going for movement speed. <laughs> I've been wanting to say that for the last, like, ten minutes. So, Shirelia's on the Lulu is a very interesting choice, especially when he's already 0-8. Um... Usually what you'd want to see is you'd want to see something that helps his team, right? You know, they do have Arden Sensor on Karma, that's true, but there's still Redemption, right? There's still other items that assist them in these team fights, these very chaotic fights that he doesn't even have to theoretically be at, right? The Redemption can help from way across the map, so that's okay. what I would have liked to Wait have seen. Minute. But given the fact that they're entirely about fighting, I think that the Shirelias works, you know? He is going to enable his Ekrim to go even faster, he has inherent move speed abilities, and then when you combine that with Karma, when you combine that with the fact that you could also put it on the Kled or the Kaisa, it becomes a very good item. Because so, it's just move speed always. Now I'm curious, is Northern Georgia just think that Zack has that much damage? Because they see him pathing around, the Baron goes down almost like the second he goes into the pit. 
and not knowing, they had no vision that it was being done from the other side of the wall by Misty Stumpy and that Dean and Yeah, it's it's Evan. one of those Heimerdinger bugs where he walks in the pit and instant shots of a W. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> so that's why I'm, I'm wondering if they think that that's what just happened with Zack. I think that realistically they probably know that they were taking Baron for a while, but I either way, that's could that could be the case, right? Weirder things have happened. When that Heimerdinger bug first happened, Whoa, I could not believe Look at that speed from Regrets! Might find out, Zack, that is the person you want to get, Misty Stumpy! He's taken apart as well, and just like that, somehow, we see Northern Georgia being able to take down the, the tier one in mid, trying to see if they can defend this bottom inhibitor tower as well as four members continue the push down mid. They are going to get the middle inhibitor, but will they trade it for more? Evan RL is looking for an answer of his own. He has taken the top T2 as they take the middle inhibitor turret. This will be the contention. Will they want to? I'm not sure. Julian has to try and get out actually, because he's still going for the push on, that on Dragon. Northern Georgia, you gotta keep in mind that all the while, Evan RL, he took down the inhibitor. He's gonna be able to fight pretty effectively into this blood, okay. even if you have Guardian's Whoa. Angel. It's not helping you out. Look how fast he's got. He has Phantom Dancer on this Renekton. He does not care. He is in for the duels. They would conquer. Helping oh. out. Bear Trap and a rope, not in time. And now in the mid, Julian, he might have found out a little bit more damage. He wanted to see if he can pick it up onto Quick Crit Shields. And they give him the move to see Dean jumping forward. Not in time to land on a quick crit, but all the while, they're just delaying the backs. Evan RL is continuing oh. to push Ignite Barrier. It's gonna cancel kill. that it's away. Gonna... But one Nexus Tower has already fallen. Finally, oh my. he's gonna be able to finally see if he can trade it back onto Evan RL. But the rest of his team, they're dying. They're getting killed off one by one. And this is opening it up. Columbia College want to see if they can go for a final push flash in dean gets cancelled by the wild growth regrets takes out julian as well there's still a lot of damage that can come in with mr stumpy tp'ing into the fight no he didn't tp he has smite now he has smite now <laughs> what is this game zeta second inhibitor down charge forward going on to the back line but the damage from Zach is absurd as he gets the shutdown on the regrets never right he had just spawned and already hit off of Scarl with the minions barreling and Baron empowered mind you there's only one Nexus Tower standing in the way from Columbia finishing off the game they're gonna back off though at this point there's too many respawns they cannot deal with all four members on the side of northern Georgia what they have to do is once they back, once they reset, they can recollect, they can think about taking maybe a dragon, maybe even stalling out for the Baron to get the guaranteed finish. But the reason the Anivia has taken Smite here is because their dedicated split pusher is Evan. So they need a way to secure objectives when he's on the split push. And what better way to do that than by getting a Smite yourself? That's fair. <laughs> That's very fair. And for 32 minutes into the game, people are getting their full builds. Looking at Julian, he is sitting almost full build. Elixir of Sorcery in the inventory. Zach, five items as well. Nope, I'm wrong. Just bought the Guardian's Angel. This man is going to be nigh unkillable if you ever want to. Oh, they want to. He is such a big part of their damage, such a big part of their burst. Their ability to even kill Quick Crit, I think, comes almost entirely from either Julian or Zach. Julian and missing the explosive cast there. Shield for Julian. Sniped out by Regress in the back line. The healing so huge for Quick Crit when he's allowed to go pretty free. No, unfortunately, no a little bit of uh, overstay coming in from the side of Columbia. Now they're going to fight 4v3. Jumping forward. Hurray. Quick Crit. They're in trouble. Oh. Same with Budget. Two kills for just the Renekton. They finish off three despite it being a 4v3. Julian with the VM selling all his items. And I mean, this should be the end at this point. 33 minutes in, right? Death timers are incredibly. Oh, oh, look oh, at the movement speed from the Hecarim. He kills off Misty Zubby so quickly as the last inhibitor tower might be fell. Evan RL, you said he's on the split push, and he is indeed the fight. 2v2. Can he actually turn this around, though? That's the main thing, the main point of concern for the side of Columbia. I don't think they can finish this off too quickly. They already got regrets, but look at how low Zach is. Has to be careful. Doesn't want to lose that Guardian's Angel. But with the Nexus Tower already gone, 
already the edge of night as well they have a way to try to win he's still trying to go for the split push but finally quick crit responds with Horai. they get guardians angel they're probably gonna get the kill on zach as well with him finally falling down the base and shambles for northern georgia there's still a little bit of hope left remember it wasn't this bad but at two inhibitors down and with very low nexus trials remaining uh columbia college came back in the last game they came back with a composition that wasn't even meant for coming back. So assuming that a fight goes equally as well for them, uh, Northern Georgia can absolutely come back. They can absolutely win. Dean, he has a friend Be in the bush. Careful. I don't think Quick Crit realized who was nearby. Does get Dean. Julian oh. will trade it back. It is a double kill for Quick Crit. At the same time, not necessarily the greatest thing for Northern Georgia. They need Kaisa alive to help clear out all of these super minions that are pouring into their base. But at least they got in better than even trade advantage, right? If it was one for one, I would absolutely agree. But at least in two for one, then you know if they come, if they try to just run it down while Kaisa's dead, we can still win the fight, right? It's four versus three. But what it does mean is that they don't clear these fast enough to even consider contesting the Baron. Now, it's still a matter of time for Columbia to win this game. Very rarely do you ever see a team come back from having... All their Nexus Towers down. Three inhibitors gone. With the Baron spawning up in five seconds. Columbia, they're going to be able to finish that off pretty damn quick. Uh, the, uh, the complexity special uh, back in the day. Get those 100-minute games going. But realistically, what's going to happen here is after they get the Baron on all five members, this should be the fight that decides if they don't win. If Columbia College flub this, right? They give it over to Northern Georgia. The Death Timers are already at a minute right? And the only thing standing between them is one single inhibitor and two turrets, right? That is tankable. That is absolutely killable, considering if they considering if they have, you know, four members plus up. But that means that they have to win this fight. One inhibitor is respawned, and they're going to look for an engage. The inhibitors respawning. Here comes Regress. Look who they found out. Misty's Dumpy Agnivia does not help out too much, even though Dean wanted to help out. They're Jennifer. backdooring! Dragging four members! He took four members away from the Nexus, and look at the damage coming in from Zach. The backdoor is secured. Game two, and the series taken by Columbia College. Holy crap, that was a fantastic series. Columbia College putting on a show, and Northern Georgia University, I mean... Hell, they came out swinging, right? They gave their best. That was a fantastic series by them, right? The absolute favorites to win. And they pushed them to the brink time and time again in game number one. Game number two, slightly more one-sided affair, but still a fantastic event. I mean, look at the kill score, right? 34 to 42 in a 36-minute game. I mean, let's be fair a little bit to Columbia. Their, their uh, strategies were a little bit unarmed in this one they let it be a little bit more fun they had a lot of fun with this i feel like the boys over in georgia they were enjoying this game too they knew that they were already eliminated they were having fun learning great things and that's the thing about this series you're going against one of the best collegiate teams there's so much you can learn in this game just by playing against them that you can start translating over to your scrims your practices and try to see if you can relate that and figure out why they were able to win with these unorthodox picks. It's about the macro. You want to watch them. If you're watching this and you want to watch and learn why they won, you take a look at the macro every single time they're making a play. Either Evan RL is in a side lane or in game number one, we have Mr. Stumpy in a side lane, right? There's so much split push that they do and pulling off a split push composition. Technically the hardest thing that people have said, pros have said, to do in League of Legends, if you want to learn how to play one, go watch these games again, because that is exactly what they did time and time again. They set up waves so that wherever their split pusher went, they would have an advantage. And after that, they staggered the wave line so that they would have another wave to get to by the time that they needed to go to another objective. And that's just a fantastic thing to see. Exactly. And this is why they have been one of the best teams is because not only can they win games in such ridiculous fashions, but because they still can show how they play as a team. Macros on point, the split pushing, ward coverage, every little detail they had down. 
This is what you want to see out of them, especially after they take the number one seed for Group B. They are going to be the ones going on forward, and you can look forward to seeing far more from Columbia. But we still have to give some claps over for the guys in the Peach Belt Conference, the University of Northern Georgia. They came out and they played their damn hearts out in this series, and I respect the hell out of them for it. Absolutely. It was a very, very close game number one. And after all, if game number one goes a different way, you know, maybe you get Columbia College to respect you more. Maybe they go a conventional composition. They don't go split push, and then you have a chance to take them in the five versus five. But unfortunately, that will not be the case. And I got to say, Columbia College, they showed why they're the best, right? They've exactly. got great macro. They can take unorthodox comps, play so many different roles at such a high level. And mm -hmm. that's such a great thing to have. Also, I'm getting word that I believe that on the other series that we had for Group B, Illinois was take and just took down George Mason two to zero. So we have confirmation on that as well. Now you pretty much know it's going to be Illinois taking the number two seed. George Mason falling just behind them, unfortunately for them. Illinois is coming out pretty strong. Want to give them props there. But that's going to be it for us here on CSL. Zeta, I loved having you. I know it was, it was a blast for this series. It might have been chaotic, crazy, but it definitely was all, but it was all fun. Nothing but laughs the entire time. So I really appreciate you coming out here. And guys, make sure the last thing we're going to do is just a couple plugs. So make sure to type in exclamation point Discord if you want to be able to join the Discord. Check out our YouTube channel, C Star League. If you didn't see the craziness, I highly recommend watching these <laughs> games because they were a lot of fun to watch. And also make sure to hit us up on Twitter at CSTAR League at CSL LOL if you want to make sure to keep up to date with everything going on in the future. I'm at Mad Magical. You can follow me at Twitter at Mad underscore Magical or you can follow my co-caster. I believe it's at Zeta, right? Just Zeta. At Zeta Beta. Okay, it's at Zeta Beta. I couldn't remember. E -D -A -B -E -T -A. It's pretty easy Perfect. to know. <laughs> you guys got it. So it's Z-E-B-T-A-B-E-T-A. Boom. There you anyway, go. You know where to thank follow you very much at. for having me, by the way. That was a fantastic cast. And I got to say, it was about 40 minutes of just play-by-play. -play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I will say I'm a little exhausted from that game. It was, uh... It was fun. <laughs> That's what it was, guys. But thank you, everyone, for joining in. And we hope you have a wonderful night. We'll check you out later. Make sure to keep up to date with everything collegiate over on Twitter. Have a wonderful night.